Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I'm from Humanitech. Um, we design, uh, or our product is a platform orchestrator that enables you to um, build your internal developer platforms. But today I'm going to be speaking about an open source project named SCORE. Um, so before addressing the bold statement underneath, um, I will address um, why we have called it SCORE. Um, in the English language, SCORE has many different meanings, right? The inspiration for this um, came from the musical, um, uh, yeah, the musical meaning, right? So a score sheet in music is a musical notation that describes how an instrument should be played. And a conductor can look at the score sheet and understand which instruments their orchestra should be playing and how they should be playing it, okay? So taking that, um, a score.yaml specification file um, makes developers the conductor of a workload that is being run across an, an orchestra of technology and tooling. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's, that's the inspiration for the name. Okay, and score is designed to be a, a single source of truth on how a workload should be run um, and enables you to run that workload on any container orchestration platform. Um, or, 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 or tooling that you may use to address that platform. So whether that be Docker Compose, whether that be Kubernetes, whether that be Helm, um, or whether that be a bespoke platform API, okay? So we've, we're saying one YAML to rule them all, okay? Um, and you may be thinking, do we need more YAML? <laughs> we've already got too much cognitive load on developers. We've already got a plethora of tools and specifications. Um, you know, do I need another YAML? Um, but bear with me, I'll, I'll try to explain why. <laughs> so looking at sort of problems for developers today, um, you know, we've got this, which comes under cognitive load, context switching, all right? And I find co cognitive load a, a super interesting topic. You know, there's a whole ream of um, psychology research on the subject, it's not just a buzzword. Um, and context switching can take many forms, okay? So for a developer, this might be, I'm writing some code, I get a Slack message asking me to do something that he's not writing code. Um, I might have to stop coding um, to jump into a stand-up. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's affecting my daily work. Score is not solving those problems in terms of context switching, but what we're looking at is the problem of switching between different tools and different workflows. So it still has that same effect of context switching um, as sort of the previous two examples, right? Even if I'm in the same IDE, if I'm switching between a different language, a different tool, a different workflow, I'm context switching, okay? So that's the problem. Um, inconsistency between environments. So the use of like immutable container images, um, the use of infrastructure as code, um, you know, it's gone a long way to help consistency between environments, right? But it's not the be all and end all of solving those um, environment consist inconsistencies when it comes to workloads. Um, you know, problems certainly still arise when you're using Docker, maybe for Docker Compose for local development, um, and then you need to translate that into a, um, a a production workload and use production resources, um, as, and you know, and, and you start interacting with a whole range of of um, enterprise grade tooling um, to do that. And then another problem is infrastructure management, okay? And I think this is a really big one. Um, in general, when we speak to developers, not, I don't speak to many who like managing infrastructure, who wish to manage infrastructure as part of their, their daily job. Um, you know, we've got tools like Terraform um, that manage infrastructure in a developer-friendly way. But it doesn't really solve the problem of infrastructure management for developers, okay? Um, infrastructure is complex. It requires, you know, specialist knowledge in system design of specific cloud providers, of networking, of storage, and Terraform is just a way of translating that um, into something more manageable, i.e. managing as code, okay? So what SCORE is promoting and what we heavily believe in is a a type of development called workload-centric development, okay, which I'll talk about in a moment. But the, op the opposite of that um, is infrastructure-centric development, okay? 
So as I've already said, you know, uh, you, you know, uh, in, typically a developer needs quite a vast amount of knowledge around sort of the infrastructure components um, and infrastructure development, centric development um, also means that we have to deal with environment specific configuration. So there's, there's quite a few examples that we could give of this. One of the example could be is our workload might have a whole bunch of environment variables configured. Um, some of those are environment specific, i.e. to staging, to dev, to prod. Um, and some of those may just be consistent um, across the workloads, across environments for that particular workload. Um, and is it something that developers should be, you know, too invested in or too engaged in, right? Um, you know, silly example, what happens if you don't change the DB connection string um, correctly and the prod workload is still put into the, the production of the dev database, you know, as an example. Um, and then we have sort of platform specific configuration. Um, so platform specific configuration, you know, this changes across environments also. So if we've got a database in a dev environment, it may just be a single um, Docker container running, uh, running Postgres. And that's all we need for dev. We just need that Postgres endpoint just to test writing a table. Um, but moving to prod, that database needs to be highly available. It needs to be scalable. It's probably hosted on GKE, uh, sorry, on Cloud SQL or something similar. Um, and we actually need to provision that database as we move that workload into prod because our workload depends on it. So how does a developer resolve that? How do they, you know, how, how do they make that happen? Um, okay, they could make a pull release on a Terraform re repository, add a, add a module that's been pre-approved um, and, and, and do it that way. Uh, but again, that comes back to context switching. That comes back to having to have, you know, specific knowledge about the implementation of that module. So what we are advocating for is workload centric development okay and you know this comes down to a few points it, like, the workload is what creates the value right if you're um developing code you're writing codes that you know it creates the business value um that's what's solving the problems that's what's moving the business forward and infrastructure is ultimately just a byproduct right um, you could have the most shiniest multi-cloud, multi-cluster Kubernetes setup with zero trust architecture, service mesh, GPUs all over the place. Um, I'd find it really cool. I'm quite an infrastructure guy myself. I spent many years in infrastructure, but it is ultimately a byproduct of running that workload. All right. Um, so, um, and then focusing, you know, so to those two points, really focusing on the workload architecture versus the tech stack in, in the target environment, right? So you know, worry, rather than worrying about the implementation of the workload, you know, just worrying about how to define that workload so that it can run anywhere. So this is where, where SCORE, this is our answer um, to some of those problems, um, which is SCORE. Um, so SCORE is a single source of truth for workload management, meaning that it is the definitive reference on how a workload should be run, regardless of environment, regardless of platform. Um, it's a tightly scoped workload spec. So the idea being this is workload centric and developer centric, ultimately. Um, so only sort of asking for the inputs that the developer cares about or is necessary for the developers to do their job. Um, rather than worrying about the complexity of container orchestration systems and um, uh, you know and infrastructure tooling systems as well. So, from a from a high level, these are the sort of three main components of of score. First, you've got the score specification. Okay, so this is the the developer centric sort of way of, of defining workloads um, that we're calling a platform agnostic specification as well. And the single source of truth on everything that is needed um, to run that workload, i.e. its dependencies um, and its, its variables, everything that's relevant to the application code. 
Then we have the score implementation. Okay, so that is a CLI tool um, that uses the score specification. Okay, um, and then translates it to a, um, a platform configuration file, something that's platform specific, okay? So currently we have a few flavors of the SCORE implementation. They are SCORE Compose, SCORE Helm, and SCORE Humanitech as well. Um, and we're in the early days of this project, so there's certainly more to come. And obviously we're hoping that um, people start creating implementations for their own platforms. So a very sort of brief overview there. Um, I'm going to be brave and attempt a demo. So bear with me. And I've got this um, score specification file. OK, so if we just look at that in a bit more depth. Um, so line number one, um, I'm just stating the API version. So we've got a version specification. Um, if we look at line number three, metadata, we're just giving the workload a name for the target platform. Um, and then from line number six to, well, from line number six, um, we're specifying a container or a group of containers that make up that workload, um, adding some variables that are going to be exposed within the container. So all pr pretty sort of straightforward and understandable at this point, hopefully. Um, and then we get to line number 13. What we are doing is we are declaring resources. Okay. So rather than worrying about the specific implementation of Postgres or where Postgres is running or how it's running or what size database it is, et cetera, we're just looking at saying, I need a database and the type is Postgres. Okay. And then I'm setting some default values um, for the, for the Postgres um, inputs. And then at the bottom I've got, I'm saying storage and type volume. I just need a, a volume persistent volume claim in this case, okay? And if we look at the connection string, um, what we're doing is referencing the, um, the, the outputs ultimately um, of, of the AppDB resource, which is Postgres, so we can actually build up that connection string. So I've got this score.yaml, um, and now I'm going to go into my terminal, right? And I'm first going to run score compose, okay? So score compose is the sort of the context um, that, I, that I was speaking of. And I'm going to say run, then file score.yaml, and I'm going to output that into compose.yaml, okay? So if we take a look at that now, we can see that... Um, I've just got, I've translated that to a Docker Compose file, ultimately, right? Um, so, so, so it, it, trans, it translates it, and, and this, this expects um, you know, Postgres to be running locally, okay? So in this case, a developer will just stand up a single you know, Postgres container. Um, when we talk about this more in production, we're really speaking about sort of the concept of platform engineering coming into play. Okay, so as a developer, I am literally worried about the workload and the workload running on the platform. Um, and platform engineering supply the resources to the workload um, and they are resolved by the platform. Okay, and I'll give you an example of how, how we do that um, in a moment. <laughs> uh, and the same can go for, so we've got the score helm implementation, so score helm run so it's exactly the same file and we output into we'll just write helm.yaml that's fine okay so exact same exact same file in, inputted and then we get a a translation into a helm file okay so those are the two pretty simple you know contexts that we're using there docker compose and helm um now, this is meant to go further and, and speak to you know, a platform, engine, platform API as well, okay? So I'll, the, the only example that we can give at the moment of score with a, with a, with a full-on platform is, is our score Humanitech context, okay? So very brief, you know, we have this platform here 
um, and this will probably be very similar to how others have built internal developer platforms you know themselves internally or similar to how others are implementing um, your platforms with platform products you know such as Humanitech um, or similar okay so with this I can run I've got a longer command here that I'm just going to paste So with this, I can say score Humanitech. Um, I'm actually speaking directly to the platform now. Um, and then I'm going to say deploy as well. OK, so we're going to just bring 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 the um, the workload up. OK. So three different. So that's actually translated it to a Humanitech or a platform specific um, uh, platform file. All right. Um, so I'm using it consistently across Docker Compose, Helm, and in this case, Humanitech. So now when I look at sort of Humanitech, I've actually said, okay, I've got this workload, um, you know, and we fully believe in this workload-centric model, um, which is you know, quite common now in sort of the platform engineering world. Um, and when I look at the sort of the specific workload, I've just said I need a Postgres database and I need some storage. It's the platform that actually goes and resolves that. Um, like any good platform should, and then the connection string has ultimately been templated in. Um, and if I look at a running workload, you know, it's actually resolved the resolved the connection string there um, from from the, from the actual resource. So as a developer, I have not had to worry about the implementation of any of those things. I've just specified my workload, uh, my container image, which has my code in, which has the actual value, um, and then this is. This, in, this, in this instance, the Humanitech um, platform has deployed onto a Kubernetes cluster and asked for a Postgres database and a persistent volume. Okay. So yeah, just a quick a quick summary um, of yeah of score. So platform agnostic workload specification, you know, developer centric and workload centric. Um, as I mentioned, we're open source and we literally only released this month, earlier this month. Um, so we're still in the very early stages um, and we will gladly accept contributions. Um, so if you want to get involved in an open source project, please reach out. Um, Again, quite a reasonable amount of GitHub stars over the past month as well. We've just exceeded 500 today or yesterday, I believe that was. Um, so that's pretty cool. If you want to find out more, you can go to score.dev um, or go to our GitHub page, score-spec. So that was all I had for the, for the brief introduction of, of score. I would very much like to open it up for questions, comments, concerns, etc. I'll gladly take any of those. Any questions for Tom? Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, does it have like a plugin system for writing um, additional like realizations of um, like other platforms? Yes, that absolutely. Like so we've got this single sort of this, the actual specification, um, but it's completely sort of unimpinionated about how that is implemented. Okay, so the idea is that, you know, us and others can write plugins for any type of system that, 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 that they need to. So yeah, that, that's 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 the idea behind the score implementation. Cool. Thank you. Um, based on that question, actually, following on, do you have any other target platforms that are currently looking at implementations and partnering with it? Yeah. So I I, I believe it's a Google Cloud run we've been looking at, isn't in the works, um, and more to come. <laughs> <laughs>